something out of my voice or you have a document that's got my name on it, 100% you can associate my name with it. But that's okay. the problem, Reggie. With And again, I'm not, I'm not just singling out you, but there's a lot of people out there that just paint this broad brush of generalities and they don't state the facts and they don't state the specifics. And, and, it, and it sucks because then you have to sit there and like, okay, do I have to defend every single little time that somebody says something bad about this case or bad about me? No, I'm cool with that. If people want to talk shit about me or shit about the FBI or shit about the case, what? that's their prerogative. I, I can put on my big boy pants and have thick skin and not let it bother me. But what bothers me is when people start saying things that are factually incorrect and try to use that to discredit uh, this case. It's, it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And a lot of things, Reggie, that you said today, I'll be honest with you, a lot of it is true, and that's why I let you just keep talking, because a lot of what you were saying, yeah, I can, I've corroborated that. But there's a lot of things that you said today, too, that are factually incorrect. They just are. And maybe one of these days, me and you can sit down, and we yeah. can kind of go over this. But, but there's a lot of things that you're saying today about death row and about Suge and about who committed murder or who could have been involved that are 100% factually wrong and it's documented. It is, period. Okay. It's that simple. Well, why, why, why did the U.S. attorney decline to file charges on any of them? That's a great, that's a great question, Red. 100% agree with you. It's a great question. I wish I had the answer. The only, the only analogy, in fact, a lot of people have asked that. Here's, here's the other, here, here's what I kind of tell a lot of people in, in kind of a, a roundabout way. The Jesse Smollett situation that happened in Chicago, you're aware of that, right? About, yes, you know, supposedly he made those false allegations about being targeted, right? Okay, yeah. you saw the police chief. Yeah. He, he had several news conferences and he said, look, we investigated this thing thoroughly there is no stone unturned, and we put together a good investigative report. We handed it over to the DA's office. And what did the DA office, DA's office do, Reggie? What did they say? Yeah, pretty much gave him a slap on the wrist. Yeah, no, they declined, they declined it. They yeah. declined it, right? Okay, and you've well, got the police they, chief saying, no, they declined well, think, the case, they, and now they're they, looking at it again. Because no, there was no, you remember they didn't uproar. have a... a Community uh, got community service, and I think a fine, didn't he? No, they yeah, declined to. to they okay. de yeah, they declined to prosecute him on those false charges, and the police chief and the, and, and the whole police department was furious. Was correct? Was furious. They were correct. upset. Okay, okay. Now let's compare that to this the Biggie case in in kind of a roundabout way. I put together a full prosecutive report. I sit down not just with my supervisor and not just with my supervisor's supervisor. I sit down with our assistant director. I sit down with our legal department. I sit down with our press information department and I go through page by page of the entire prosecutor report that I presented to the U.S. Attorney's Office. I do the, you know it, you know how cops, how the relationship with uh, the prosecutors work, Reggie, you were a cop. Yeah. We do the investigation, they decide to prosecute and put on the prosecution. Okay. Okay, they, they declined to prosecute. And it's documented that they would not provide me a letter of declination. Not just once, but several times. And each time that they declined to provide a letter of declination, I documented it. That's in the case file as well as the process. So clearly what the former FBI agent Phil Carson is stating here, he's stating that he has handed in to his bosses a full prosecutive report that would be turned into the DA's office. The DA's office then would determine if this case will be tried or not the DA's office declined meaning the DA's office declined to try this case so and several times and it's all documented according to Phil Carson the only FBI agent who
who worked the case. This is extremely alarming. It's breathtaking when you think about it. And if this information was disclosed back then, it would have been very, very bad. Probably riots. It was like that. Right? You know that I was an open book. Cooperate. Why you never came? And they said, hey, Reggie, I want to talk to you about these, about these things. You want me to answer? You know, you want I, me I to, knew. You want I me knew. to answer? Hold on, hold on. Oh, Re Reggie, if that's yeah. your question, do you yeah. want me to honestly answer it? Now, are you okay. aware? Did did Greg Cady and did and, and people on his task force did they ever look at that prosecutive report? Do you know if they did or did not? I, I don't know. You you don't okay. know exactly. I don't know. Okay. Okay, just like a lot of the things that, that have gone on with this FBI case, as well as probably a lot of things that went on with Greg Cading's task force, you don't know what went on in those specific cases, do you? No, you don't. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's, that's, the that's, film. If you believe all that, then you believe all, if you believe all of this, and you believe I was involved in... in, 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 in I, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say oh, that you were involved. I didn't say you were not involved. Okay. I said, but if let, you do here, believe that, let me just ask here, you this. Here, oh, let, yeah. Sure, go ahead. Go ahead, Rich. Why Why didn't you ever come knocking on my door and, 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 and talk to me? You, you saw the 302s on me before, right? You know that I was an open book, cooperate. Why you never came and just said, hey, Reggie, I want to talk to you about these, about these things. You want me to? You know, you I, me I to, knew. You want I me knew. to? Hold, hold on, hold on. Oh, Re Reggie. If that's your question, do you want me to honestly answer it? Yes, sir. You sure? Because I'm trying to protect you from yourself here. I don't, no, go ahead. Okay. Okay. We did talk to you, Reggie, in its document, okay? This is what you I'm trying to, to explain me? to you. Yes. This is what I'm trying to explain to you, Reggie. <laughs> yeah, whether no. you remember things, whether you remember things or don't remember things, I don't have control over, okay? Okay. Yes, it's documented. Okay. Now I want here's here's a good way to I, I want to kind of segue out of this because I am trying to protect you. Okay. You understand that the FBI and I think it's probably a good way to, to to end this part of the discussion. Okay. Back then, when I was working this case, there were two types of sources that the FBI had. They had the kind of source we call them a 270 source. And that basically meant it was somebody that was trying to work off a of beat, like they had been, you know, arrested for drugs, or let's say they were in prison. Which, and which Kevin Hackey was. Want, Make oh, sure oh, you oh, let oh, people oh, know. Slow down. Slow down. Kevin slow down. Slow down. Okay. Slow down. No, slow down. Okay. I didn't say that. And a 270 source is somebody that's willing to testify. They they're they're willing to get a break on whatever the situation they're caught up in, and to try to get a break. They're willing to testify. They have to testify or we would not open them up as 70 source. Okay? okay? Period. The other type of source is what we call the 137 source. And that's somebody that's not willing to testify and we will never divulge their information and we will never state whether they were an FBI source or not. And the reason for that is for a couple reasons. One, it's not only to protect the source, but two, it's to show sources out there that when the FBI gives their word, when they want somebody to cooperate, if that person is willing to cooperate, but they don't want anybody to know that they're cooperating, they don't want anybody to know the kind of information they're providing, or what the reasons are that they are providing the information and cooperating, that we will never divulge their name. That includes even in front of a judge, okay? Now that's, that's a pretty strong relationship that the FBI would have with what we call the 137 source back then, okay? You understand that? You understand the distinctions between the two, right? Okay, yeah, I got you. Okay, okay, okay. Let's just leave this right now then, that okay. at first you didn't think that you'd ever met with me. And I, now you, I, now, I now, and now I, you, you said you was LJ now, partner, I, I mean, uh, uh, what exactly. did, LJ? If you was LJ partner, then I agree that I met with you before. Okay, okay uh, you know what? For your own, Reggie, let me, you got to trust me on this. For your own safety, let's just move on to something else, I'm, then, okay? I'm not worried. Reggie Wright Jr. is clearly 
being torn out the frame right now by former federal agent Phil Carson, who worked the notorious B.I.G. case. Reggie is slipping up a lot. He really is. I mean, he. I mean, if you just listen to Reggie Wright's answers, you can tell, man. There's a lot of shape shifting. There's a lot of side stepping. There's a lot of that going on. You know, there is a lot of that going on. Reggie Wright has been implicated in both Tupac and the notorious B.I.G. murders. He's also uh, allegedly implicated implicated in attempting to take Suge Knight out. No, not Suge trying to kill Tupac. No, not Suge Knight wanting to kill Biggie. No. Allegedly, they are saying Reggie Wright orchestrated all of this. Reggie Wright was even trying to take Suge Knight out. Reggie Wright became Death Row's CEO when Suge Knight was locked up, and that was by default. Unbeknownst to Suge Knight, no knowledge of Reggie Wright Jr. becoming the new CEO of Death Row Records. No. Not now, until Suge Knight, Reggie Wright, and the rest of the world can to see, see clearly Knight what's happening and what's Knight going was on. In jail. Check he it out. He finally went to see Suge Knight. He didn't go initially. He went later on, and when he went to speak to Suge Knight, Suge Knight was like, yo, man, what's up, man? What's going on? You know, what? You know, where you been? People telling me, you know, things about you, you know? And, um, you know, Reggie, if you, you know, can uh, spot his character, you, you can see that out. Reggie kind of played on Suge at that time. And, I mean, Suge pretty much had no choice pretty much at that time to, I guess, run with Reggie, you know, because they wasn't at odds all the way at that time, you know? even though they were, according to Reggie, allegedly, because they are alleging that Reggie Wright Jr. attempted to hit Suge Knight, allegedly, but then got Tupac. They are alleging also that the hit was put out not on Biggie, but on Puffy, which is P. Diddy. The hit was put on P. Diddy, but they hit Biggie. They couldn't get Puff. So, you know, and Biggie was right, so they got Biggie. That's how that went down, allegedly. See, at this time, Reggie Wright Jr. was sleeping with Suge Knight's wife, allegedly. He claims that they grew up together, blah, 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 whatever. But this is what was going on. And it was a, it was a plot. You know, it was a plot to completely take over a label, to completely take over an industry. It was a, you know, it, Reggie Wright Jr. is a former cop, you know, and from all of the evidence that's out, this particular department that they had in L.A. was so bad. It was the Rampart Division. It was so bad that they disbanded the entire department after the Biggie case. Okay, it was that bad. Okay, normally they'll take out offices to move them and, you know, demote them or, you know, take them off of payroll. No, they removed every, they removed the, enti the entire division. So this is what we are basically up against when it comes to the notorious B.I.G. in regards to his murder.